So there are many different opinions on what it takes to be happy. Is it health? Is it wealth? Well, 80 years ago, Harvard set out to study set out on a study to unravel the secrets of human happiness. They wanted to discover what it takes to have that fulfilled, joyful life we're all after. I'm joined by happiness expert and speaker Heidi Allridge to discuss the five profound lessons we can pull from this study. Great to see you, Heidi. Yeah. It's the longest study ever performed on human health and happiness. Um, over the years, it's had 13,000 participants, and it's followed many of these individuals through their whole life. So we can, we can feel good about this research. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read to you the five main takeaways of the study, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. The first takeaway, happiness is most profoundly influenced by the quality of your relationships. Absolutely. And I love, I've studied this study. I didn't do the study, but I have definitely studied it. And I love that that is the number one thing. It's our relationships because that's what lasts longest. That's mm -hmm. the longest thing we're ever going to do. Mm -hmm. And so the focus on having good, strong relationships is so critical. And I think we need to like be quick to forgive and offer grace and also be a little curious in our relationships. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I was going to say, if people are experiencing a gap point in this area, curiosity is yes. a really good place to start. Yeah, and we tend to want to be like reactive instead of reflective in mm. our relationships. And so like if a loved one comes to you and says, look, I got a new tattoo, the reactive part would be like, what? why did you do that? Or the reflective person would say, Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. It's that curious. Mm -hmm. And so we can be little curious detectives in our relationship and try to get to know people genuinely yeah. instead of what we expect them to be. Sometimes it's getting to know people you think you already know. It's usually with our kids. Prove to be the strongest <laughs> bond yeah. forming yeah. activities. Okay, emotional well-being made the list. Yes, that is, emotional health is critical too because uh, people that are emotionally healthy, they understand the connection between thoughts and behaviors and emotions. Mm -hmm. And they understand that they can be controlled. Mm -hmm. And that's really critical to know that we have a choice yeah. in our thoughts, which creates our emotions, which creates our behavior. Our emotions don't control us. That's right. Yeah. And we think they do. There are times. <laughs> yes. And like like if the example was to like you're you're mad about wanting to clean your house, you know, you're frustrated, you're overwhelmed, I don't want to clean the house. I feel so used, I feel so unappreciated or whatever it is, yeah. underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And those are, the house is neutral. The house isn't making those feelings. You're deciding to have those feelings about cleaning the house. And so I love to teach people to kind of reframe the experiences mm -hmm. and think, you know what, I'd love to have the peace and serenity of a clean house, or I'd love it to be organized or to smell nice and things like that. And you can change that instead of the dreading it yeah. to being able to enjoy it. It's that attitude yes. and outlook. The thinking on, about it. Yeah, the task doesn't change itself. That's right. Our approach can. That's right. um, physical health made the list, and there may or may not be you know, things around that topic that you can control. Absolutely. I'd like your thought on this next one, finding your purpose. How does purpose lead to oh. happiness? Oh my goodness, yeah. Finding our purpose seems to be like so overwhelming. We hear that, like find your purpose, and we think, I have to save the world or <laughs> change the world. And it's like, it's not like that. Finding our purpose is actually just finding something you're good at and then just doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that. And you can start to kind of find things that you enjoy a little bit more. And really the key to this, and it's kind of a weird thought that you can have, is if you're thinking what your purpose is, think what would you want on your headstone or what would you want said about you mm. after you're gone? And that'll help you kind of determine what is your purpose? What are you good at? What do you enjoy? Because what are things you'd like to have set? I would love to say, you know, she was a good mom or a nice yeah. neighbor or one loving friend, you yeah. know? So then I can spend my days on that purpose. Working backward. Yeah, that's yes. a great traffic signal, so to speak. Yeah. Points you in the right direction and then you can work backward from there. Yeah. I've got about 30 seconds left. It was no surprise to me that gratitude and happiness, the correlation there is so strong. What are some simple, easy ways that you've found we can express gratitude in a way that gives back on the happiness level? You know what, the one thing I just did this last year was to write a thank you note every week. Oh, I love so that. So after a year, I had like 50 thank you notes. I had handwritten, mailed, or just delivered on somebody's door. And as you're spending your week thinking, who can I write a thank you card to this, this week? Yeah. You're just spending your days and you're appreciating things, you're having gratitude, and then you get double prizes because that person you gave the card to is also, their life is enhanced and yeah. they're happier too. So What a good practice. It's what a, a good great, discipline. Great strategy. Yeah. Heidi, thank you very much. Thank we'll you. post a link to the study on our website if you want to take a deeper dive. Where can we learn more from you? 
I teach Happiness 101 at UVU <laughs> in Orem, and classes start in September, and I also have a podcast, Heidi's Lemonade Stand. So. Well, thank you for thank inspiring you. us all. We appreciate it.